Hello, I'm Skylar and this is Kennedy, and today we'll be discussing the Piers Harris Children's Self Concept Scale, the second edition. This self concept scale measures an adolescent's self concept or perception of oneself. This includes how they view themselves, their attributes, and their behaviors. The six domains or subscales used and measured within the assessment are behavioral adjustment, intellectual and school status, physical appearance and attributes, freedom from anxiety popularity, and happiness and satisfaction. These domains measure appraisal of physical appearance, evaluate self-assessment of intellectual abilities, measure feelings of happiness with life, assesses mood and level of anxiety, measure social functioning, as well as admission or denial of problematic behaviors. There is also a total score yielded by this assessment. The total score reflects a person's overall self-concept of themselves. This self-report assessment can be implemented with adolescents 12 to 18 years old. However, there are certain cases where administration can be done with children who are at least seven years old, only if the child has at least a second grade reading ability. The assessment can also be administered to just one individual or a small group of individuals. Since this assessment is a self-report measure, it is not recommended to give this assessment to children or adolescents who are uncooperative prone to exaggeration or overly disorganized in their thinking. This assessment looks like a 60 item yes or no standardized test that observes an adolescent's reported self-concept. The adolescent is filling out the standardized assessment by circling yes or no to each statement. The information is interpreted by first utilizing the auto score form with the use of the carbon paper to score the validity scores, the self-concept scores and completing the profile sheet. The carbon sheet allows for the answers to be copied and reported on the inconsistent responding index, which identifies the answers that are not consistent with the previous ones answered. This box will get checked off if an inconsistency is shown. For example, if the statement I am good looking was marked as yes, meaning a one on the inconsi inconsistent responding index and the statement I have a pleasant face was marked as a no, meaning a zero on the inconsistent responding index, the answers are inconsistent and can be considered as being answered randomly by the client. Too many, too many of these scores reduces the validity of the test. Next, we calculate the responding bias index raw score by counting all of the yes answers of the 60 items. To calculate the raw total self-concept score, count all of the item, items in which a one was circled in the first step. To calculate the raw score for each domain, locate each one that is circled and put check marks in the boxes that are in the same row. Count the number of the check marks corresponding to each domain scale and enter these totals in the correct spaces at the bottom of the scoring worksheet. For the profile sheet, circle the value in each column that corresponds to the raw score. Connect these circles to make a type of plot chart. The T scores and percentile ranks for each raw score are found along the left and right margins, be, being straight across from the raw score. Enter the T-scores in the appropriate spaces in the, for the validity and self-concept skills on the profile sheet. A high total T-score of 60 or more generally indicates a higher self-esteem and strong, strong positive self-appraisal of oneself compared to other adolescents. An average T-score uh, 40 to 59 indicates that the client's self-esteem is within normal limits compared to others. And a low total T-score of less than or equal to 39 indicates that the client may have decreased self-esteem and serious doubts about their self-worth compared to the other sample. The high average and low total T-scores are also representative of each of the six domain skills. Each domain consists of the same or similar high average and low interpretations. An example video of administration of the assessment is shown here. Hi, Taylor. So right now what we're going to do is a typical assessment with some yes and no questions to say to answer. If you feel that like the statement applies to you, then you're going to answer yes. If you don't agree with it, you don't think that way, then answer no. Basically what these questions are going to tell me is um, a little bit how you feel about yourself. And how you feel. This is how you feel. Okay. Shown here is a small portion of a completed profile sheet. As mentioned prior, the circled numbers are the raw scores, each corresponding to a T-score. The numbers are located in the left margin. 
Plotting the T-scores, like shown above, allows you to get a good idea if the individual scores are in the normal range. Items on the assessment range from a variety of different statements. Examples of items include, I am strong, my parents expect too much of me, I am unhappy, I have nice hair, and I am a leader in games and sports. An OT may use this assessment to establish a client's self-esteem in order to address negative perceptions of oneself and the reasons why perception of self is low. With this, the OT can attempt to turn these negative perceptions into positives, as well as using these perceptions as motivational factors to overcome barriers of poor self-concept and poor occupational performance. With that being said, this assessment relates to functional performance because self-concept relates to identity, body image, and role performance. Your attitude towards oneself, as well as your motivation, significantly affects your achievements. Your achievements are dependent on what you think you are able to accomplish. Perception of self can either decrease or increase motivation, therefore making your perception of a task as difficult or easy. If you perceive yourself as doing bad on a math test, you are more likely to get a bad grade on that test. If you walk into a situation confidently, it is more likely you will get increased satisfaction out of that task. With that being said, poor self-concept and lack of motivation can make occupational performance increasingly difficult. The mindset of why try, I won't be able to do it anyway, can be debilitating to a person's performance in occupations. High self-esteem, motivation, and satisfaction of a person participating in a meaningful task in a least restrictive environment creates optimal occupational performance. Along with this, fully understanding the client's own views, goals, and perceived self-esteem is helpful in implementing successful interventions and goals for the client. Thank you for listening and here are our references.